you go wandering along the beach, you yeah. go and see all the local stuff, and then you go and eat lovely yeah, food yeah, yeah, and yeah. you have a chat with the have a chat with the chef, yeah. help the chef do stuff. It's lovely. Somebody said, Would you do you want to go to Northern Ireland for a little thing? Go and stay in a weekend. Yeah. I said, Really? You want to get paid to go on holiday? Yeah, yeah I'm going. I'm off. Where's the beach? The beach is beautiful. Yeah, right up on the very north of the north of Ireland. Right. It's absolutely like Castle Rock up there. The beaches, the beaches I are know. so big and it's in such a quiet area that you think, well, where are people going to park? You know where to park? On the beach. Of course they do. You just drive down on the edge of the beach. There's maybe 20, 30 cars there and they're completely lost in a, like a seven mile long beach. Yeah, I mean, it's some fabulous. of the most beautiful beaches in the world are in the island of Ireland, around yeah. the island of Ireland. Um, so it's the same B&B every week as well. I thought, because I say, I, you know, it was a revelation for me, the whole episode. Yeah. Is, is it going to change every week? No. Should get these, on it. These guys own the blimmin' thing, don't That's they? That's it. They love you. <laughs> I'd love that. Lippy, love lippy Londoners are welcome. Yeah, a lippy Londoner. <laughs> so you, you land um, and then you get sort of the run of the house. Um, yeah, you get exactly. You superstar status. Not, not superstar status. Unrightly. Um, even if you're not. <laughs> and you went to visit a herd of Wagyu beef. Yes, we did. Right. Yeah, beautiful. I, now, I, I, you sort of um, dispelled the myth for me. I thought you had to massage beef for it to be Wagyu, but Wagyu is a breed. Wagyu is a breed. Tell That's me more. the other one. The, the, it's a, what's the other one called? I can't remember what they're called. Know. But they, they're the ones that they, they massage with beer. Right. But these are just a breed, very gentle, gentle cows. They are Japanese, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And the Japanese, the Japanese would never for centuries allow their cattle out of Japan. And sometime, I think it was in the early part of the last century, it was maybe into the 40s or 50s, yeah. they allowed out a consignment of Wagyu cattle. And I think they went to Australia. And so there's a, there's a, there's a, range, there's a range of cattle that have bred off that pedigree. Yeah. So, and now they've spread around the world, not everywhere. So you can still get... Wagyu beef that has been raised elsewhere other than Japan. Yeah, now Ireland, Northern Ireland, clearly because yeah. you met the farmer. Yeah. Then the farmer comes yeah. for dinner. And we, yeah, and then we, then we, then we cooked. We cooked beef Wellington. Apple. What was interesting about the beef? Uh, by the way, I love the chef. He's the regular chef at this. Isn't he this lovely? Beef. He's yeah, really yeah, cool. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a thing. Alex, yeah, yeah lovely he's guy. He's got, a, he's got a nice restaurant in, uh, in in Belfast. The thing about the, what they did with your beef Wellington is they he made some pancakes. Yeah. And so he insulated the the beef the the Wellington joint itself with pancakes before then wrapping oh, it in yeah, pastry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't know that was a thing. No, no. And then you put like a little chopped up mushroomy thing in there as well. Yeah, a bit of coriander and as well. Do, oh yeah, everything, everything, kitchen sink, the lot, and everything's all wrapped up and wrapped and up. And then you put the pastry. Yeah, around but, it. right. And then you put it on. And then what you do? Well, even before that, it stays all locked in cellophane yeah, yeah. and chilled in a fridge, yeah. so that it gives it a much more solid base. Yeah, yeah. Then you put the then you put the the pastry on and then you cook it and then you eat it. Yeah, can I say that when you were helping them prepare what looked like to me, my mouth's watering just thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, tell me the best mashed potatoes I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could almost smell them through right, the screen. Right, I know, and then he put some of that smoke thing in, so you've got a smoky, oh, a smoky. You see it? I yeah, see it, yeah. So that's yeah. just sm it looked like the kitchen was on fire, God, but it wasn't. Was, they were just smoking the potatoes. The lovely, love food. But when you were helping to mash the potatoes yeah. through the sieve through the sieve which yeah. is why they're almost liquid but not quite yeah More but, like but they've still got enough I don't like them when they're too sloppy no I know you I know, know what I mean I like them when they've got a bit of body but can I just say Larry as you were doing that yeah and still holding this conversation and doing a little bit to camera as well now and again I thought yeah. He's done this before. Yeah, because yeah, exactly you were case. you were cooking on camera, uh, w in conversation, and the cooking aspect was almost a motor program, like sort of you know Matt Tebbett would do on Saturday Kitchen, where he can do that almost. I thought he's done this before. All you got to do is go along and be with James Martin in the kitchen when he's doing it, right? Yeah. Then. What happens is you kind of realize, and you know, I'm I'm certainly not a chef, but I can cook. You do like so cooking. I'm at ease in the kitchen. Yeah. And if somebody that knows what they're doing tells you what they want you to do, yeah. right? I can get on and do it. I'm a great kitchen helper. Right. That's what I am. Sous chef. Sous chef. Yeah. Sous chef. You chef. Whatever. <laughs> but I am good. I am good at doing that, and I've helped a lot of them on the telly do it. And 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 it's kind of like. It, I really enjoy that. So do I. Yeah, I enjoy it. Just having a little do is of something. Is food your thing then? Like, what are you saying? Yeah, it sort of is. Give I mean, your, I'm give careful your top with three it. Thing, top three things. So staying well, got, mean, to, got to be number one now. Staying well, yeah. absolutely. Number or one, do, staying I'm well. no good at being ill at all. Okay. Are you a big reader, a big music fan? Yeah, read, 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 write. Right, I'm writing now. I'm right. writing. What are you writing? I'm just I'm just putting the final touches to a novel that I wrote during the during the, the um, okay. lockdown. And... Uh, 
you know, it's like I thought it's all about writing the book. And, you know, I'd written an autobiography about 10 years ago and I really enjoyed doing that and it did really well. Then they were trying to say, they were saying to me, you should write a novel. And so I tried to write a novel, I couldn't. And then, like, cut to 10 years later, somebody said they kind of dared me and said, you've got to be able, this life of yours that you've had, yeah. you've got to be able to fictionalise an element of it. And then George was nagging at me, you know, you've got to be able to do this. So in the end, I was dared in to do it, to write something that's kind of based on the life that I've had over the last 40, 50 years in this business. How would you encapsulate that in one phrase? It's about a group of, it's a, about a little film company of people that know each other that go off to an island in the Caribbean to make a movie. Not a massive movie, <laughs> but it all goes seriously pear-shaped. Pete Tong. That's it. Love it.